This video is brought to you by Scentbird. Hey everybody, welcome back to Knife Out, the series where I review a movie and pair it with a meal. This week we're talking about the latest animated Disney hit, Encanto, and we're pairing it with a popular pastry in Latin America known as Mil Hojas con Arequipe, following Erica Dino's recipe over at My Colombian Recipes. I know what you're thinking, why did you not make the arepas con queso? Well, one, Binging with Babish already did that, and two, this show isn't about making food from the movies, it's about making the movie in the form of food. And this chunky, flaky, but oh so delicious pastry seemed way more appropriate for one of the year's sweetest films, and you'll see why. But speaking of good smelling things, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you access to over 600 brands. They allow you to choose a new fragrance to try every month for only $16. You can try everything from top designer brands like Gucci to indie labels like The Harmonist. They come in these cute bags, and inside the cute bags are cute cases that come in a bunch of different cute colors. Scentbird is your introduction to the scent world. Unsure of your taste, Scentbird can help you find your preference with their simple online quiz. Each fragrance comes with a 30-day supply, so you can try it out without committing while simultaneously being a smart and conscious consumer. Personally, I received Le Jardin Retrouve's Bois Tabac Virginia, Aqua di Parma's Colonia Intensa, Room 1015's Electric Wood, and my personal favorite, Tommy Bahama's Maritime Triumph. All of Scentbird's fragrances are 100% authentic. You can really tell they work directly with the brands to bring you the best experience. Use my code CARSTEN55 for 55% off your order. That's only $7 for your first month. Look good, feel good, and smell amazing with Scentbird. Available in the US and Canada. First, you're gonna wanna preheat the oven to about 400 degrees and then line a baking sheet with parchment paper and forget about that, set it aside and bust out your pastries. Now, if we wanted to, we could have stayed home and endured the annoying process of making our own dough in sheets. But this is Disney we're talking about. We don't reinvent the wheel with originality these days. We take a formula that already works, plug in the recipe we're using it for, and it makes life a lot easier. Find the fold marks and cut your pastry into three strips along those lines. Upon opening mine, I realized the packaging kind of already cut them for me already, so, Okay, place those strips on your baking sheet and poke a few holes in them. This is so that the dough can let out some steam while baking so that you don't end up with a bunch of bubbles in the end. Encanto, like most Disney films, is a very by-the-books film that leaves no room for error, or at least tries to, so we want to do the same with our pastry, leaving no room for any bubbles or unevenness. Place that puppy in the oven and let it bake for about 15 minutes or until golden brown. And this is when I realized this is a very simple recipe. We're already kind of well on our way, and similar to Encanto, we need something to fill the time, to really up the stakes so we dance because that's they do they do a lot of dancing in this movie but i guess we could get started on that delicious cream that really adds the sweetness that'll keep you coming back for more for me this is to the meal what the music is to encanto this movie would simply not exist without the music the same way this dish cannot do without this cream so we want to go about it a certain way because this is what everyone is going to be talking about for this the original recipe had us using normal dairy milk but i went with oat milk why well because everywhere i go oat milk seems to be sneaking its way into my life everyone is consuming oat milk on a daily basis all the time and everyone pretends like oat milk is this next level thing that's so much better for you but I don't get it it's just like fine quirky milk um sort of like Lin-Manuel Miranda. I mean, hey, nothing against Lin, the man has some serious talent, and yeah, his music is what is bringing a lot of people into this movie, but it just felt right to include oat milk in the pastry because just like Lin-Manuel, of course it's involved. So bring that milk to a simmer, and while you do that, find yourself a small bowl and stir together the sugar, cornstarch, and salt. This is the mixture that's gonna turn that ordinary old oat milk into something like a paste, some tangible things that you can scoop up and down, add that to your milk, and let that cook for about six minutes until it thickens, making sure to stir occasionally. I really mean it. You gotta keep stirring. In between stirring, find those eggs you laid earlier and beat the yolks. After those six minutes are up, add the eggs and let that cook for about another two minutes. Also, making sure to stir. Please, keep stirring. Somewhere during this process, your pastries are gonna be ready to take out of the oven. And that one minute period of stirring the eggs, taking out the pastries, and then taking the cream off the heat is gonna be extremely chaotic. You clearly underestimated how much attention you'll need to give to the cream, and it sort of becomes your main concern, and you kind of forget to put the pastries on the drying rack, but you're like, that probably doesn't matter. But all is well, you've removed the saucepan from the heat and now it's time to mix in our butter and vanilla extract the catchiness the last bit of sweetness that is really going to tie all of this together after taking a whiff you can confirm that while it might not look that 
that appealing on the surface, it smells unbelievably good. Which is good and important because the music in Encanto undeniably sounds really nice. It's well produced and well written and showcases just how many things Latin pop music can be. It's also catchy and easy to listen to, the same way this cream is undeniably very sweet and sugary and delicious because, I mean, you saw the ingredients. After that, it's time to transfer the cream into a bowl. Cover it with saran wrap and refrigerate for an unspecified amount of time just to let it cool down a bit. And while we do that, we should pair this pastry with something. Perhaps a cappuccino. Let's call this the emotional hook, the thing that's really going to keep us hooked on the story, something that'll keep us thinking about it for a while, the most sustainable ingredient. To keep it simple, it's the thing that turns a good time into a great one, so let's try to nail this. Now, unlike writing a great movie, making a homemade cappuccino really isn't that difficult, or so I thought. Start by brewing a shot of espresso with your Nespresso machine, that's, you know, fine, does the job. Figure out how much milk you're going to use, and this is where you did the math wrong. Your proportions should be a third of espresso and two thirds of milk. I brewed about a fourth cup of espresso and without thinking was like, okay, so that means a three quarters cup of milk because that completes the cup, right? But that is just simply not the same. There, it's not the same ratio. Zap your milk in the microwave. It may not be the best way, but it's the easiest way and froth that until you start to see foam forming. Pour that into your espresso and boom, you have a cappuccino. I guess. Let's cross our fingers. Moving on, it looks like our cream has probably cooled down by now, so take that out, and now it's time to put it all together. Take the pastry that speaks to you the most and split it into three layers. Top the first with some of that cream, repeat for the second, and for our third, we're gonna bust out the dulce de leche, the top of our tower. This is our animation. All of this means nothing if it doesn't have a sweet topping that really complements the rest of the piece, and Encanto's animation, it, it's fine. It's bright and inviting and sweet, just like our dulce de leche. I mean, it looks great, the same way dulce de leche undeniably tastes great but it's no coincidence that I went with the Nestle brand that you can find at Target, and Pixar's Luca feels like you get that same sweet goodness, but it's clearly coming out of, like, Bon Maman or something. And that's our dish, and honestly, it looks pretty great. Milojas translates to Thousand Leaves Cake, and it makes sense because eating this, you really start to crumble apart the more into it you go, which is one of my favorite parts about Encanto. The film takes a step away from being a clean, tight, plot-heavy film, and it focuses more on heritage and familial backgrounds and the ways at which we go about trying to understand them. Our pastry craft and falls apart just as much as this house does in the movie, and it really reveals just how many layers are beneath it. And Encanto goes about this in a really sweet way, literally, where every bite and every scene is gonna have a certain level of charm to it that will keep you coming back for more. My issue with the film can be summarized perfectly with... Uh, yeah, I'm not finishing that. The cappuccino is not good, and I honestly blame myself for messing up the proportions using a microwave and just going about it in a really rushed way, but it felt fitting because it's kind of how Encanto handles some of its heavier messages. Anytime the film feels like it's going somewhere with a character, it focuses on a different character. Maribel is a really sweet protagonist, but she really isn't the type of character that's going to stick with me for longer than the movie's runtime. She felt not fully finished by the end. It could have used more espresso and less oat milk if you know what I mean. But all that aside, it's an incredibly filling pastry. It's essentially a massive Pop-Tart that makes you feel like you're eating something better than a Pop-Tart, and it isn't giving you a whole lot of nutrients, but that's not to say it isn't really delicious and enjoyable in the moment. Will this deserve its inevitable Best Pastry Award this year, even though it uses some really simple ingredients? In my opinion, no. But it does taste really good, and I see myself revisiting it more in the future. And I think that's that. Thanks for watching, go watch Encanto and form your own opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.